All right, here we are, top of the hour. We'll get started just kind of lightly with some intros and stuff, let people keep trickling in, uh, but also want to be respectful of everybody's time as we get started and start on time and end on time. So thanks again for joining us. Um, appreciate your time. I know it's hard to get away from middle of the day stuff often. So the fact that you log in here and uh, do some learning with us and with Veeam is a big deal and we appreciate that. Um, and because we appreciate that, uh, we're going to do some giveaways. So that's kind of fun. Um, actually one of the qualifiers for the giveaway is just showing up. So I'll go through some of the rules of the event, give you like an intro here and then, um, and then we'll intro Rick and myself, uh, tell you a couple of things about us and then we'll jump into some top 10 content on uh, Vmon. So this is a Vmon recap. So, uh, if you missed it, if you missed Vmon, um, then that's a bummer where well, there were 26, 28 sessions or something. Terrific content that Veeam does every year. Everything from kind of thought leadership stuff to real technical in the weeds stuff. Um, and it is a terrific event, much better live than it is virtual, but it was still pretty good virtual. Um, and we wanted to kind of distill that for people. Um, how do we take everything in Veeam on and boil it down into uh, some key takeaways? So that's what we're going to do. Nobody better to do that than Rick and um, he'll intro himself in a minute, but here's how this event goes. Uh, we're just going to kind of walk through it normal presentation style, but you might have signed up for this because uh, we're doing some giveaways. So everybody who um, shows up and asks a question, um, and I'm going to throw one more thing in there, is going to get a $50 gift card uh, just for being here and, um, and asking a question or answering a question. So if you've been on these events with us before, Here's the gist, like we want to create a space for a bunch of people just to get together momentarily during the week for, you know, 45 minutes an hour and maybe do some learning, but not in the traditional classroom format, more in that kind of lecture hall, turn to your neighbor, ask some questions kind of format. So Rick and I are going to be running through this top 10, but as we do, we're, our ask is that you ask some questions. Um, and hopefully they are related to the content. So we incentivize that by doing giveaways. We've given away huge prizes before, next-gen consoles, $500 gift cards, $100 gift cards. This time we're just saying, show up and ask a question or do a comment and you're gonna get something. Um, that said, please adult with me and ask good questions related to the content that we're talking about. Um, you know, we're gonna talk through some cool Veeam stuff. If you got questions about Veeam or backup NDR or about other competitors or cloud IT infrastructure, any of that, let the, let the Q&A have it. And then hopefully we get some good dialogue going. Um, in the past, we've seen some really cool dialogue that's like, um, you know, somebody's asking a question from California, somebody in Indiana has got a good answer to that question. And, um, you know, that is pretty cool problem solving. And uh, in my opinion, my favorite thing about working in IT is we get to solve some pretty complex problems together. So. Um, so participate that way. The other thing I'll ask of you, so um, if uh, you can, is to jump over, oops, to jump over to our LinkedIn profile and give it a like. Um, so we're going to cross-reference everybody who asks questions on this thing. And if you are, if you've liked our LinkedIn page, that's going to be the other trigger that gets you a $50 gift card. So there'll be, because you registered for this thing, you got an email um, and you'll get one afterward. Um, so if you've got any questions about, hey, did I get a prize, shoot a response back. Um, we want to give everybody prizes. So, but those are the things you got to do. You got to show up. Hi, thanks for coming. Um, then you got to ask or answer a question. So start, you know, engaging the Q&A there as we go through the content, do that. And then you got to give us a like on, on your LinkedIn profile. And that just also kind of helps us know who you are. And um, then you can keep in touch with us as well. So. Uh, there we are. We're at vsystems-com um, on there because you can't do dots. But um, so go grab that and give us a like on there, and then um, and then you get a fifty dollars gift card. It's like the easiest fifty bucks you ever made. Anyway, so um, we do have a few people on the Q and A who uh, are going to are going to be answering some questions from our side too. So it's not just you answering your your own questions. Um, hopefully, there's people on our team who are going to answer questions for you. And Rick and I will be popping in there and um, answering questions as we go too. So Rick, I would do a disservice if I, um, if I tried to own the whole intro on you, but um, Rick's been doing a lot of Veeam stuff for a lot of years. Maybe one of the most well-known guys inside of Veeam. So really excited to have you on here. 
tell us a couple of things about yourself. Well, cheers, Dirk. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I think part of that is just because I've been here a long time. Uh, this is my 11th year at Veeam on the product team and uh, where I report to the CTO. And I, I have a very instrumental role in creating the Veeam on the content. So um, I don't want to call myself uh, an agenda manager, lack of a better word, but I help shape the content that is the event. So I'm like, okay, we need this product. We need this um, matter. We need this, you know, perspective, you know, so I kind of build the agenda. I, I work with a lot of other people to do that, but for the topic of today, you know, to condense everything back up and, and beam into this time, I've got an instrumental hand on it and I'm really happy to be here with you today. Yeah, really. I was kind of curious about the process and I, I, we didn't, we practice, Rick and I practiced what we we're going to talk about yesterday. And I meant to ask you that question. I forgot, but I was just kind of wondering. So really like your this top 10 kind of goes back is kind of cyclical it goes back to the beginning for you which is probably where you started with Veeam and that's what we want to talk about with Veeam on 2021 and so now we're kind of back to okay let's just summarize what we talked about so cool nobody better to do that then um, so my name is Dirk Ahrens I'm the president at Virtual Systems and um, just to kind of give you the relationship we are a, a top partner with Veeam so we're a cloud service provider partner so we deliver um, not just Veeam licensing the customers, but um, a lot of the cloud backup and cloud DR and Office 365 stuff. Um, but one of our favorite, we've been a Veeam partner forever, I think since the beginning of the partnership. Um, we're one of the biggest in the Midwest. Uh, I think we'll see our, our platinum badge this year, hopefully. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Good to be with some of the top partners in the world there. Um, but we do a lot of Veeam stuff and, and backup and DR, as you know, given the cybersecurity climate today, is the hot topic of, of conversation. And one of the great things that Veeam does is just put this content out via Veeam on and other ways on like, what's everybody doing across the country, across platforms? How's everybody solving backup in DR? What can we do to iterate and keep getting better at it? So, um, so it's fun, it's been a great partnership. But so Rick, this is you, what are we talking about? Well, it's a, it's a, as far as I know, it's one of the most mature industry events specifically focused to backup and DR, and that's VMON. Um, we just concluded it um, last month, late last month. And I'm happy to tell you, Dirk, this is the last time it'll be an online only VMON because we've <laughs> committed, yeah. yeah, we've committed to having uh, VMON 2022 back in Las Vegas, and it will have a hybrid element to it. So. What we've learned is right is having an industry event for our customer and our partner in Richmond. You know, there's an incredible catchment. We had we had incredible attendance, right, for this, which is really surprising in the era of, you know, virtual event fatigue. Uh, no offense to the present yeah. company here, but I feel like a lot of people yeah. are just at a limit of that. But we we exceeded our targets. We uh, we donated, I believe it was a hundred thousand dollars to Girls Who Code because we uh, hit our target. Mm -hmm. But it's a user conference focused on, you know, technical information, decision maker information for Veeam products. And this is our sixth, I think, sixth or seventh Veeam on. And um, yeah, you can replay it for up to three months, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a little time sensitive. But what we're going to do here is kind of take some highlights that, uh, that, that Dirk and I collected here that we're going to share with everyone. And, you know, it was... Uh, successful it was like two days four and a half hours each or so so it wasn't like all day it was and now you can replay it on demand so it's great and you know it was really asked how many yeah somebody asked how many countries people were viewing from do you know <laughs> well it, it a tricky question because <laughs> we explicitly didn't promote vimon in france germany um hmm. A couple of locations where the language matters, okay? Yeah. Um, because those markets, like Germany, for example, is Veeam's second largest country market worldwide, and they will do their own thing. They're going to repurpose this, put it in local language and stuff. I don't know, but it was every region hit their goal. I know that much. We because we from APJ cool. EMEA's uh, Americas and EMEA. Uh, we everyone hit their goal, and then right now the European ones are going on, and uh, and so, yeah, it was very big for a virtual event, but we don't know how we're going to make it fit in a hybrid format next year, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. So replay still happening. 
um, for what, three months, you said? Yeah, three months. So it'll go through like, say, let's see, May, June, July, August. So the uh, 25th of August is, I guess, when that three month expiration bit is up. And, you know, it's, it's a vehicle so that everyone can learn about Veeam, about object storage, about security, about day two management ongoing with our products, about um, security, cybersecurity, about just getting used to Veeam, right? A lot of people that came to this Veeam on, Dirk, this might be their first introduction to Veeam, and we are very aware of that. We didn't want to alienate them with something super deep. So we actually had a whole separate track of the fundamentals, right? So we wanted to really oh, cool. uh, speak to everyone at their level and position. And, and here's an interesting tidbit. With the exception of two pieces of content through the whole event, everything is 30 minutes or less. So mm -hmm. it's very consumable. And here's a little pro tip. You can replay it at 2x speed, 4x speed, if you want to even, yeah, you can. <laughs> you know. Uh, one, I think 1.5 on. is as fast as I can actually like still take on information, but. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Depends on the accent, right? If it's, uh, we have a couple yeah, right. of people who just naturally speak slow. I went up to two on that, so. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I see a lot of good questions in the Q and A, so that's cool. Keep that coming uh, as we hit different topics, and thanks for kind of staying on topic too as we are talking through this stuff. So great questions so far. Uh, the first thing, um, maybe talk about how is this? I mean, as a service is real. As a service has been on around for a long time. So what do you mean? Well, I think that this is the palette of the market, right? And it's something that you and the virtual systems team have built an incredible practice on it. But a lot of times people come to us for these technologies at the bottom, whether it's physical backup, virtual backup, software as a service like Office 365 backup, and they'll come into Veeam and maybe they'll use another product. But really at the end game, they're kind of in a situation where they need a complete stack, a complete solution to back up all their different um, technologies and data. And, and the as a service experience is something that we've had at Veeam as long as I've been here. This is my 11th year at Veeam. I like to say that partners are in Veeam's DNA and service provider partners as well. So the thought here is that if organizations want to consume backup of these different data sets, you know, there's Veeam powered solutions to do that. And we really take that to market as the service provider console as being the product that's going to deliver that and some other technologies as well that make it easy for customers to just onboard with Veeam across the different sets. And, you know, if you go on the next slide, we kind of say, well, what does that platform really look and feel like? Well, it's really built on these four dimensions of data, cloud, physical, software as a service, virtual and SaaS, and that's actually five. But basically these five pillars of the data center and in IT practice in general, there's a need to have these all replayable and, and you know consumable and, and backed up. And you know to kind of highlight down at the bottom, we have a couple of different recommended things. You know, one recommended session on this, which I feel like it got cut off on mine, Dirk. I'm not quite sure if everybody else sees this, but there is a recommended replay from Veeam on about what are you leaving on the table? How can as a service help you maximize your Veeam investment? Because the thought is once you get Veeam in there, there's so much more you could do as a service. You know, everything from DR as a service to offsite backups to uh, fully managed Office 365 backups and more. So that's kind of like where I think the, the value added difference comes in from what service providers like virtual systems are doing. But uh, that, that's why we do it. It's real. Yeah, no, that's good. I So on mine, I do see the thing is at the, is at the bottom there. So if anybody else has seen that cut off, I don't know, maybe I got to like change the view. So let me know in the chat. Um, but also I, we're seeing a lot of this too in the market, like just the customers changing their whole business model around how they consume their IT services. And I, I feel like the one of the mantras in IT forever has been doing more with less. You know, every year it feels like, well, we might cut our budget here. And only probably in this recent, at least in my mind, in this recent cybersecurity climate that we're in, are we seeing a little more of tolerance at the operations level to start saying, hey, we're going to free up some more budget next year to do some more, you know, IT related things. So, one of the, I think one of the outcomes of that has been 
how do we subscribe to some of our services instead of outlaying all this capital and buying more than we need at the beginning of the year or the beginning of a two year or three year. And that has kind of maybe helped produce the climate, the business climate that's ready for as a service. But um, yeah, I saw, I saw a lot of coursework, you know, in the VMON stuff that just kind of touched on that idea too. So good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I would also add that new services are almost consumed that way. Office 365 yep. is a great yep. example of that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's become the standard. I think that's true. Okay. So much of it's easier. Yeah, I'd say that's true. And I like the disclaimer at the bottom with the right help. You want to elaborate? Yeah. And that, that again is that difference maker, right? So two services that service providers can make the difference uh, of what's really hard to be done to really make it easy or backup as a service and disaster recovery as a service. So the service provider offerings that Veeam has had in the mix for a very long time really address some of the finer points. And disaster recovery as a service, for example, is one that organizations are like, yeah, I'll get to it. And you know, uh, yeah, I'll get some of it set right, mm -hmm. but they never really mm -hmm. closed the loop here. And so the thought is with the expertise and, you know, getting it right from the start, organizations are going to really make this a lot easier. And, and the best analogy I can come up with, Dirk, is like no two disasters are really the same. And that's right. actually the unknown is actually a really important difference because Sometimes you might need additional IaaS infrastructure as a service to really complete yep. an incident. And that's an area where a service provider can help an organization out versus their own deployments way better than what they would have done on their own. And so in fully managed backups, all these different things make the difference, right? So I think yep. that organizations need to know that these options are out there today and, and really expertise from you and your team make the difference for sure. It does. I was on a call with a customer the other day and they were there with a cloud provider and just kind of exploring other options. And you know, the question at some point came to them like, well, if you're with a cloud provider already, a cloud partner of Veeam's, then why are you exploring other options? And, you know, they talked about like, here's what we need. Like we need some help with, you know, carving out the backup and DR plant. Like we've never done this before to your point. Exactly. Rick, like they are doing some element of it, but it's not robust and they know it's not robust. And, man, I'm like, that is everybody's story. Just so you know, like every customer we talk to is in some version of this is, on a scale of one to 10, this is not a 10, but it's not a one. We're somewhere in there. We just need some more help with kind of fleshing out, like what, what don't we know yet? You know, what other options do we have with Veeam? What things like Veeam is so feature rich, it's easy to use and intuitive, but it's so deep. And so like, and I, the question I think we get is like, what can we do that we're not doing today? And, and that's part of, I mean, that may not be virtual system that can be somewhere else for you. Um, we do it and we do it terrific. Um, but make sure your partner, whoever that is, that's doing some baths and drives for you can do that stuff can really, you know, ask you some of the right questions, give you a template for, Hey, this is how, here's just some best practices. Are you doing, sure backup and sure replica what does that look like um, are you taking advantage of, of object storage have you carved out your um, rto rpo or your data retention policies internally what does that look like and do your operations people know what your data retention policies are and how you know how cheap it can be to store it somewhere else or you know all of that stuff so um yeah, I, I, we saw that, I think, through a, a few classes, too, that you guys did here. But Well, and the trick here, Dirk, is that sometimes organizations might have it pretty well sorted out with, say, just their VMware deployment, but the yeah. workspace is changing, right? Office 365, yep. maybe physical servers, Linux servers, file servers, and then the public cloud. And, you know, soon Kubernetes is going to be in the mix, right, with the Veeam recent acquisition from Cast. And so as the individual IT footprint of an organization is growing. So is the need for these backup of these services and that expertise and, and that help to make that yep. difference. So that, that can be a reason yep. for change right there. Just having the full menu addressed. Yep. Yep. Good point. Key news. Talk to us about, Hey, what's, uh, what kind of announcements did you guys do? 
Yeah, so something like this as an event is also a good vehicle to deliver corporate news. In fact, I'll give you an exclusive, Dirk, today, just today, um, Veeam announced a new business unit, basically uh, a subsidiary, Veeam Government Solutions, right? So we have a whole new entity really focused at government uh, solutions based in Washington, D.C., right? Cool. Now, the timing didn't line up to put it at Veeam on, but there were some really good nuggets that were delivered at Veeam on. One, a new product, Veeam Backup for RHV. So we've had a lot of pressure for an additional hypervisor, so RHV will be the fourth hypervisor uh, supported by Veeam. Uh, there's new progression across the cloud products, so new capabilities for Azure, AWS, and Google, which you would expect you know, for native backup there. And then the third one is that this is a big one. I was really stoked about this, but Office 365, one of the biggest, you know, the, well, I'm using it every day for Teams and the like, but the backup product that Veeam has for that space is doing very well. The version six will introduce a self-service restore portal as well as uh, some other enhancements, but really just, you know, given a better experience. So the end users are going to be able to restore their own data. So um, those are three of the, you know, things plus one bonus that we uh, covered in the Vimon event. And if you want to watch these, they're, again, they're 30 minutes, right? Just go on into the general sessions and watch those because they cover that uh, on the replay. So it's an easy way to, you know, catch up with Veeam. But the real takeaway is the, the new product for RHV. That was, um, that was a long time in the workings, but I'll give you a little nugget exclusively for the uh, attendees here dirk is that it is really similar technology to the nutanix solution we have so we've built a yeah. framework that's going to allow us to scale and, and rapidly add this and you're going to see this product go into beta internally here soon so you know definitely let's just say h2 of uh, 2021 this product will be out it might even be out q3 so we'll see but um, that's progressing cool. quite well yeah cool good stuff there were some big there's some cool announcements um, I'm going to answer a couple questions as we go, just because we're getting some really cool ones in here as we swap to a new slide. But um, this is interesting. So Scout is asking, are there, um, is there other licensing options or can we, does Veeam do more than just Office 365 backup, which I think is funny that maybe you associate or somebody associates Veeam with just Office 365 backup. So yes, they do a ton of, you know, greats of everything, physical agents and started as just virtual machines was how Veeam started. That's actually where the name comes from. And, um, but I think that's kind of a fun question to answer because that's really the newest product or one of the newest products and has become super popular as people have migrated to, to uh, Office 365. But that's um, funny. That's funny because uh, usually I have to fight perception of Veeam as just this like SMB VMware backup toy. Right. Yeah, but when yeah, we come right, in right. a new market like Office 365 and we do great things, it, I have uh, I have analyst data that I can't quote yet because it's not published, but I have analyst data indicating that Veeam is the most deployed Microsoft Office 365 backup solution in the world. So in yeah. that world, we we are sitting very well and really good awareness. Yep. Right. So um, but yeah, that's funny that we uh, that, oh, anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, right. So there is a question. I'm going to move to the next slide here, but um, you talked about RHV. Somebody's asking, are there more hypervisors on the roadmap? So, Peter, thanks for that question. Ooh, good question. So, you know, VMware, vSphere, Microsoft Hyper V, um, Nutanix, AHV, and soon Red Hat uh, for en enterprise virtualization, RHV, whatever it's called, uh, the Red Hat one. Those are the four. Beyond that, you know, we have the technology to rapidly add others. Um, you know, I don't have anything to share here other than, you know, make the case. You know, bug me, bug your yeah. team sales rep, bug your service provider, you know, Dirk and his team. They talk to me. We have a process to prioritize these things. Um, you know, but realistically, the, the focus for, you know, additional hypervisors will be RHV for the short term. Yep. Cool. Let's talk ransomware recovery. Um, more options for ransomware recovery than we've ever had. And that's important because we're seeing more ransomware than we ever have. So, yeah. So that's an area that I take as my industry focus. So everyone on the product strategy team, I challenge them, including myself to take something other 
than a Veeam product capability to know about. And so some people have taken orchestration and automation tools, cloud native apps, um, or uh, security. I've taken the ransomware recovery angle. And what we've done at Veeam is really listen a lot, believe it or not. That's the first and most important thing I can do. So I, I spend a lot of time talking to the Veeam support team. So downstairs here, um, I'm in the central Ohio Veeam office. We have a support center here and ransomware cases are handled really in a specific manner. Love going down and talking to those people. They deal with it every day. And when I say every day, I mean every day, all day. We have a dedicated support mm -hmm. team for that. And I listen very carefully to, you know, oh, high five, we won, recovered data, you know, whatever. But then I also, I listen even more when I hear the things don't go as expected, right? So we, we've adjusted our story based on this and adjusted capabilities as well. But what we're doing at a higher level is aligning Veeam capabilities to the NIST cybersecurity framework, which is a very well accepted common language of security around identification, protection, detection, respond and recover. Oh, I got that right from memory. But basically yeah. the, the thought here is that this is a, a collection of five functions that will really drive the ability to recover data. And if we go on the next slide, I, I boil it down into a piece of advice and that's the 32110 rule. And that says to have three different copies of data on two different media, one of which being off-site, the Veeam difference is to have one more or at least one of those others that are offline and mutable or air-gapped and then have no errors with recovery verification. Now, offline and mutable or air-gapped, I want to highlight, you can actually get that with a service provider. Cloud Connect Insider Protection. And, and Dirk, I'm putting you on the spot here. You guys offer Cloud Connect, is that right? <laughs> I wouldn't let you keep talking about it if we didn't, but there yeah, we go. absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so the Cloud Connect backups, the insider protection mechanism is completely out of band from the end users. That actually meets my criteria of being ultra resilient. So if you don't have a backup that's either offline, air gapped or immutable, you can enroll in Cloud Connect backup and have an offsite backup that's out of band that you can drive recovery if you need to. So let me pivot this another way. When I talk to support, Dirk, and when I hear about things not ending well, the very consistent thing that I hear is that organizations don't have a copy of data that's either offline, air-gapped, or immutable. So there you go. It's that easy yep. to get started. So, um, you know, and I would highlight that I did a session, ransomware recovery, 10 top expert advice and tips. Actually, should be tips and advice, but that's okay. I, I, I typed that wrong, but that was me. Uh, just when I read it and I look at it at the same time, I, ca I caught that. But basically, I highlight briefly the Veeam ransomware capabilities in this session, but this is something that we've got plenty of stuff on the website and all that about. What I did is I brought someone in who beat ransomware a year ago. And what I did, Dirk, was really interesting. I had Dave, the guest, I had him tell me, what are you doing different now, one year in? It's gold, gold mine. For those of you out there, uh, if you're wanting yeah, to uh, beat ransomware. So um, yeah, this is the way the NIST cybersecurity framework, the offline immutable yeah. or air gapped copy of your backup data. And then some of these tips here that were shared for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm going to bet he answered some version of I'm, I'm definitely practicing like my, my recovery events a lot more or somehow building some of that in. I think that's one of the missing elements that we see from a lot of folks is you know, they might have some things in place. And like I said before, they're somewhere on that continuum of one to 10, like in mm -hmm. grading their backup and DR plan. But practice is often not uh, one of the ingredients that they've decided to put in there yet. And I, in my opinion, one of the most important and the businesses that we're working with who are practicing, this is routine. Like something happens in their environment and they're like, okay, we're doing this thing and then we're doing this thing and then we're good. And they fail over and they're running out of, you know, an IaaS platform with us or they're, you know, just pulling down files, whatever they needed to do in that case. But, um, man, it's like, remember that, do you, do you file sports? You remember Alan Iverson's thing on practice? Practice, man, it's just practice. <laughs> We're talking about but it's practice. It's so important. You're talking about practice? But it's so important. I mean, yeah. it's like, and the, it applies here, I think. And um, I, oh, I did want to say too, before we move on, on that NIST framework. So, this will differ Veeam service provider to service provider, but virtual systems kind of got its start on aligning inside of not just the NIST, but the FFIEC, which is, you know, a little more in um, 
in the finance industry, but both of those frameworks and building compliance right into the solutions. So your data sits on backup here, you recover a workload into a DR environment, and it's already, that environment is already meeting um, NIST requirements, it's, it's SOC 2, it's got HIPAA compliance and um, PCI and you know different things that are on there and that we can build in there for customers who need to hit different compliance needs because I mean, compliance is a, it is a big it's, it gets a bad rap as being a lot of check boxes and it is but it's a lot of good check boxes to think about um, and so you know kind of building that right into the solution can be an important model as well so big priority for for I would say for us for sure and I know for Veeam as well so. Yeah, Rick just Rick P just asked a really good question on here about you know how's how's Veeam ransomware recovery different than the market, and one thing I'll highlight, Rick, is that you can get into what I call double and triple play immutability. That by the math is really in your favor. So let me just give you a real quick example. You could take an on-premises backup and put it on the Veeam hardened Linux repository with immutability and have copies go to a service provider and then put it on tape for worm media if you wanted that's triple play immutability you have a copy that's offline air gapped and immutable in a tape if you mark it as worm you have the linux hardened repository with which has immutability on premises and if you have a copy it in cloud connect with insider protection that's ultra resilient as well and the opportunity to restore somewhere else so by the math, Rick, I think that is very strong. And you know the tape part you could drop, you could keep it modern with just Linux and then service provider world. But there's so many flexibility options there that you know you could really drive really confident recovery there. And then also the, on the other side, Veeam's secure restore technique, which makes sure that threats don't get reintroduced, that closes the loop and that that's gonna be the difference maker. So um, yeah, talk to Dirk team talk to me about that privately rick p but uh that was a good question yeah yeah super good um so this actually number five kind of hits to that question that we got earlier on do you do more than office 365 but i think you know veeam's been working against this perception that they're just you know a vm backup solution and and i saw that in some of the classes like hey don't forget we do this like let's expand on this idea but talk more about that rick yeah, so I do fight the perception a lot. So that's why I put this in here as number five. And then I also kind of steered the content agenda for um, Veeam on event. And, you know, here are six different products that are not virtual machine backup, right? And so the first two are actually pretty interesting. They're orchestration engines and a management product. And then there's a public cloud backup. Then there's the Kubernetes backup product, casting K10 by Veeam, Office 365. And then a lot of people, in fact, I just had a conversation today, Dirk, about the agents. And these are very high-end, fully ready for anything type of backups. I mean, I'm backing up the computer I'm talking to you on, Windows, Linux, Mac, physical servers, clusters. I see people using this in the cloud, you know? So these agents are ready for anything, right? So Veeam is more than VM backup. It's basically a complete platform. And there's also the SAP HANA plugin and Oracle RMAN plugin and database awareness and SQL magic and you know SharePoint magic and all kinds of good stuff, right? So it's more than just a virtual machine play. And that's one of the, I don't want to say perceptions that I have to deal with just from an education standpoint. And for those of you watching, and I see a couple of um, a couple of comments here in the questions as well. One of the things we've done with the event that I thought well, it worked out perfectly, but was the demo series. So at any given point, this made mm -hmm. more sense for the live broadcast, but at any given point in the agenda, there was always a demo. So if you want to learn about casting Kubernetes backup, or if you want to learn how to monitor your environment or how to set up orchestration plans, you can, in 30 minutes or less, watch a demo that goes through some of these different capabilities and you can really walk out with a very good understanding of how these work to then, you know, take your next step and make it make sense. And so that, in my angle, is is a really good way to kind of understand the Veeam platform, the full breadth of offerings. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, somebody asked, um, I'm actually going to flip over here. We'll see what happens. Just kind of shoot from the hip. Somebody asked if uh, Veeam is still doing recordings. And we talked about this real quick at the beginning, but I recognize Maybe not everybody was here right at the beginning. 
Here's my yes. Chrome browser. Can yes, you exactly. Vmon.com. Okay. You can go to the website. You can still sign up even though the event's concluded. But Dirk, go ahead and click on like underneath Americas and hit select. And this will actually give you the agenda that was available for the event. And so a couple of the different sponsors. And then here's those general sessions. And so like, yeah, right here is a good one. Um, at this time zone, you could take any one of these recordings and, and say, watch recording. And then a little trick, you got to go to the right. You'll see Edwin's got kind of cut off there. But if you hit that little single Chevron, then you'll get V11 best practices. You'll talk about, uh, then there's the demo series with that deeper green. as some guy talking about performance and storage. I don't know who that guy is. But anyways, um, I want to draw your attention to this recording. Is uh, It's a great library for on-demand. And like I said, you can play back at higher speeds. It's like 26 or so technical yeah. sessions to kind of or four decision maker type sessions. And yeah, every single one of them, you just hit that play. And Edwin, a former architect, uh, he gives a lot of good best practices here. So it's very easy to consume this content as a library. And again, it's only up for three months. So tick tock, tick tock. Not tick tock, yeah, but like tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> It is, yeah, it is really good too. So the format's really cool. I appreciate it. I'd never seen like the whole lobby view. So the first time I logged into Vmon when it started, I was like, oh, I feel like I'm at an event. Really? Um, as much as you can. I got, uh, yeah, cool. okay. I thought it was cool. The music's playing. There's like, you're kind of looking down on this thing. Let's see, I mean, let's see if we can do it right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it was good yeah, technology. Was I got to give a hat, hat tip to our, our vendor. They were, I'll, I'll be honest with you. We did. We wouldn't have been able to do it without this business partner we have. That uh, we used an external yeah. group to help deliver some of that. But they were um, they were outstanding. Marty, by the way, I'll I'll send you a link to this. But yeah, good stuff here. That's cool. Yeah. Number uh, six. What do we got? How are we doing on time? As we keep going through, so we got around twenty minutes yet. So. Good stuff. Thanks for sticking with us. So uh, M365. So it started as Office 365. I don't know what happened on Microsoft's end, but now everybody in marketing has to change the O to an M um, is needed and it's easy. Well, so I use both on purpose, on both Microsoft yeah, and Office 365 <laughs> because it is changing. I'm trying to program myself to say Microsoft 365. But the important yeah. thing is whichever service you want to call it, there's a shared responsibility model. And all cloud and SaaS offerings function in this offering. And the one thing that is really important to note is that the data in M365 or Office 365, that is the responsibility of the tenant. There is a need for backup. And um, that is highlighted in the recommended content there below, eight Office 365 backup facts you need to know. So uh, Corinne on my team, she does a great job of explaining this product and why you need a backup. So you might want to check that one out. That's important. A lot of people, when I talk to organizations that have M365 issues, a lot of times their problem is because they didn't know they needed a backup. And even ransomware, honestly, is now becoming an issue, especially for OneDrive files. And you know the way it gets synchronized out, it can be a mess quite quick. Uh, so having that backup is a very, uh, very good first step for sure. And it's cheap. So I just want to, I mean, cheap is probably a relative term, but, you know, think in terms of, you know, a buck or a couple bucks per user per month, you know, all in that's getting you storage and, and licensing and, and now you've got full control over your data. So it's not, you know, it's not a bad um, product to step into. It's not difficult to step into. Um, and then I mentioned too, there's, so on the storage end, uh, you know, what Veeam's doing around allowing for uh, ARC or S3 capable storage possibilities. I mean, these are really relatively cheap to step into when you're thinking about immutability and being able to put that ransomware like proofing layer on your infrastructure, um, super, you know, super accessible. So very low barrier, robust. very low, yep. like the barrier of entry for backing up Office 365 is very low. I'd argue it's way easier than starting to back something up on-prem. Yep, yep. All right, but there's other problems. <laughs> yeah, right. This is good. This is, I heard Dave Russell talk a little bit about this too. So, uh, oh, actually this is a, I think a Dave Russell slide. Yeah, exactly. So like uh, 
you know, you were saying everybody's on this one to 10 scale, right? On their readiness, yep. preparedness and disaster recovery is a good thing to start with, right? You know, ransomware is a disaster, right? Uh, other fire, flood and blood is a disaster. But the reality that it's still a topic today is because organizations aren't getting it right. And the reality is it becomes a gap. There's a gap between what the organization expects and then a staggering level of what the organization can actually deliver. So, you know, we have survey data. This is uh, something that Dave Russell and Jason Buffington work on, the data protection research report. That as far as we know, and if we go to the next slide, it says 42% are not able to recover. But, you know, this is one of the largest data sets of backup and DR only. Um, yeah. there, there, there is more than 1,800 respondents, but uh, the thought is when we collect this data, this is one of the largest backup only data sets of how uh, the market, you know, is viewing some of these things. And, you know, the results are many and bad when there's a gap, mm -hmm. right? So if about half or less than half of the market can actually do the DR level that's expected, right? So these are the consequences when things happen. And so we've worked hard to identify the areas that need to be addressed and then deliver capabilities to that. But then again, partnerships are in our DNA. Service providers can close that loop. They're, they're gonna make it easier when you have the right type of help, right? So especially yeah. when you look at, um, you know, these business impacts that come with this, you know, how do you get there? Right. So one of the things we've done, and you can see this on the next slide, is a new product, the orchestrator product, Veeam Disaster Recovery Orchestrator, that can work in conjunction with any other thing you're doing at Veeam. You, know, you can still have Cloud Connect backups. You can still have, you know, offsite DR. But you know, some of the other, you know, just putting Humpty Dumpty back together again type of things, the orchestrator product can really help. In fact, uh, this happened just yesterday, but Melissa on my team. She had set something up in the public cloud for something she was working on, and she did what you should never do, which is use RDP over the internet and not a complicated password. And she logged in, and there was ransomware on the Veeam server that she had. No joke, Dirk. She was able to recover everything back in seven minutes, and she kind of tweeted through mm. that scenario, uh, which was awesome, right? So orchestrating automation, th these are the future ways to do these types of things, but DR needs to kind be of right. Speaks more to, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but it just speaks more to what we were talking about earlier with the fact that as a service is real and like doing things, doing more with less is a real problem. And so if you can build that orchestration, you know, those elements into your solution and kind of, and do the practicing with them, but also have the tool do some of the activities that it needs to do on its own. Um, it makes it easier for everybody. It makes it, you know, obviously the recovery for her was quicker and mm -hmm. uh, you have more confidence in the process and the pro product too, so. Yeah, and if, if you haven't gone through a ransomware or any type of disaster, right, it's like not a good thing. It's not a good feeling. In fact, I remember the first <laughs> message she said, she's like, how, what's wrong with the browser? None of the links are working on my whatever. And then she goes, oh, you know, it's like everybody's had that oh, no. moment when a user explains yeah, yeah, this weird yeah. message and stuff. So having been through that, yeah. I think it, I think it's only 24 hours for her, but uh, into it and out of it. But um, I really want to um, kind of build on that. Like it was an interesting experience, but uh, yeah, just getting yeah, out of problems. That, that's what we need to do. That moment is a terrible moment. We had a, we had a customer submit a help desk ticket because we're delivering a whole IaaS stack for them. And, and they keep clicking on a link in their email and nothing is opening up. And they're frustrated because Office 365 must be broken was the comment on the ticket. <laughs> um, and, you know, and, and we quick jumped in and, you know, Maybe remedied <laughs> that and rolled it back and re-delivered it and everything was okay. But that moment is like, oh no, 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 don't click. No more yeah. clicking. Yeah. Bad. All right, CDP, how much time we got? We'll, we'll get it on quick time here. One of the newest, yeah, most good. anticipated things that we released uh, this year, earlier this year in February, Dirk, was the continuous data protection or CDP capability. So if you go to the next slide, what this is, is a great way for VMware environments to um, have as little as two second RPOs, incredible, incredible recovery options. Um, but the reality is, you know, this is VMware only. It's a, it's a, it's a particular deployment. You don't 
put CDP in for everything. But I would argue everything gets backed up, but only about maybe five, 10% of critical apps would get CDP. And I say that not because it won't scale, because it actually will scale very well. It just has some overhead to do this type of thing, basically a forked yeah. right. I'm simplifying it greatly. But in the context of Vmon, if we go to the next slide, this was probably one of the most interesting opportunities. We did, I did something different. It kind of broke the rules. I made a 75 minute session. So an end to end workshop of how to deploy this CDP engine. So if you're thinking about this, if you're curious about this, watch this 75 minute session. I've got Rasmus on the bottom, who's the, one of our best trainers, Tim on the top here in Ohio, one of our best architects. They walk through how to deploy CDP end to end. And um, I, I can confirm this was actually the most viewed regular session out there. This mm. was the most pre-registered session out there. A lot of demand for this capability. And, you know, we're going to build on it too. There's going to be more service provider options. I'm sure uh, Dirk and his team could build something special for you, or if anything, just the services of deploying it. But uh, there will be more service provider friendly options for this technology here, but it, it is only just three months old, four months old. So. Yeah, it's in its first iteration, but it's exciting that it's here, that it's part of the Veeam ecosystem now, this kind of technology. And I think it opens up just a, a lot of doors for customers who are using it. Um, and I think you point out a really important thing, and that is maybe something, some of the basic building blocks of building your backup and DR architecture is to really decide what goes in CDP, what goes in replication, because um, it's not your, you don't replicate everything or you can, but I mean, that's not probably a, the most efficient use of your infrastructure. So making some of those business decisions on what gets replicated, what, what gets backed up, what goes to, you know, an archive tier, um, how long are we keeping data? And yeah, I mean, this is, this was a really cool workshop. This is a really good one. Indeed. All right. More, a little bit more around perception, I think of Veeam again. So have you yeah, seen this lately? Yeah, I wanted to kind of highlight that, you know, again, a lot of people come to us for backup. I need backup and recovery, or I need replication and failover. Those are the fundamental yep. things that I, people come yep. to Veeam for. But the reality is on the bottom, we have these other capabilities, cloud mobility, monitoring and analytics, automation and orchestration, governance and compliance, right? These types of things are the finer points of backup. But the reality is for the data sources on the top, there's an opportunity to do some things that honestly you didn't think about. I mean, I know a lot of organizations have restored to the cloud or, you know, had monitoring insights that with the backup data that are actually eye-opening, you know, take the easy example of I want to back everything up and then I need to search for credit card numbers or social security numbers where they shouldn't be, right? Those are capabilities we mm -hmm. can do today, you know, kind of cracking into the data. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see that basically there's this platform that, that is Veeam, right? Again, it's more than just virtual machines. It's a um, it's a full-blown platform across those five disciplines, cloud, SaaS, modern applications, virtual and physical workloads. And then it can be consumed on the bottom on-premises in the hyperscalers, but also as a service. And I'm convinced, Dirk, the as a service angle will continue to be more attractive, more impactful, and, and more aligned to the way different services are actually consumed in their kind of root form. The thought is if I consume Microsoft 365 as a service, I would want to consume the protection of it as a service. If I consume, yeah. you know, all these other different services and, and there will be more software as a service from Veeam, there will be more public cloud capabilities. There will be more each of these. So, and then the yeah. middle, the quote unquote hamburger is built on APIs, backup and recovery, the monitoring, the orchestration, and reusing and having insights into that data. So that's kind of where we sit in the market and what Vmon was really meant to deliver to the market. And, yeah. you know, hopefully we hit the hit the mark for a lot of people, but I got to spin it around, you know, and, and Dirk, you know, what's in it for the attendees here? What for the market that you and the virtual systems team are out to serve? I think, you know, it's a good toolkit but what are you guys doing with it? Yeah, well, I think that's a really, so you had a good segue. I would highlight, you know, Dave Russell's course here, which was the future trend. So you just said, I think that as a service thing, we'll keep going. And 
and uh, and that's what the data points to. And so Dave points this out. You mentioned this study before, which is the largest study that was ever done around backup and, and recovery. And so the data is showing, and we get this question from from businesses a lot, what's everybody else doing? What, you know, we just want to know, like, it's kind of in the same vein as what are the best practices, but, you know, what are people doing with this? And so this data that uh, Veeam did was really, you know, kind of helped uncover what is everybody doing and what's everybody planning to do? So, um, part of what came out of this is you're right, like everybody's planning to reduce hardware, um, at least in large part. Um, and then you look at, you, you know, what, as you look forward, the question is, you know, what in, uh, how do you estimate your organization's percentage of servers um, in each format currently, virtual machines and physical hosts and that stuff, and then what's it going to be down the road? And so it shows, the data shows a reduction in physical servers um, and an increase in hosted virtual machines um, with a service provider, which is really kind of as that, you know, in that as a service model. So with a hyperscaler in your Azure's, pardon me, in your AWS's, but also with the regional um, service providers. So with anybody, you know, else who's doing this, the virtual systems of the world. So that's the trend and that all kind of points to that as a service model. So I think, you know, when you ask the question, what's in it for everybody else, um, you know, it's that idea that I think came up many times during Beam On, which is leverage your partners around the table. So part of what, you know, every business is challenged with is how do we keep getting better on our own? How do we keep improving our skill level? Do we need to get some Veeam certifications in the room for us so we understand Veeam better and our own backup and DR um, infrastructure and architecture? But another way to do that is just grab the smart people in your community, you know, in your, not just your physical community, but you know, your service provider community, who can help you answer some of these questions, who can deliver some of this stuff with you, who can add to your expertise. I mean, I'll tell you virtual systems does that, you know, we keep looking for who are the technology partners in our own ecosystem who can continue to add to the depth and breadth of our expertise. Um, and I think every business is doing that. So um, yeah, here's some more data that came out of that course, but re just uh, exceptional research that came out of that Thing spearheaded by Dave and summarized in that class. So if you didn't take it uh, and you're wondering some of that stuff, like what's everybody doing and what are the trends showing in the marketplace? I mean, I think the minimum size, so it's the businesses that they surveyed, I want to say were 500 employees or maybe a thousand and more. I don't know it. Um, they'll talk about it there, but it's a really good slice of data from a big cross section of businesses that just says, you know, hey, everybody's reducing their on-prem footprints. Everybody's looking at as a service and they're trying to, they have plans at least to try to build out the expertise by leveraging great technology partners. So, you know, and, I, and that's how we build our cloud provider business here. And I know that's how Veeam does it too. You can't, if you just want to compete on, you know, trying to del deliver a solution and not being experts at it, you're not going to do a great job at that. You know, Veeam does a great job carving out they want to be the best product out there. And so you see that in the way they expand. I think the same is true of virtual systems, the way that, you know, we picked a tech stack with Veeam and VMware um, and Microsoft that we are excellent at. And, um, you know, I think that's a big piece that keeps us in there sitting at the table with some of the clients that we sit at the table with. So that friends is a wrap so terrific questions um we got a couple minutes you want to i don't know rick if you're looking at any more there was yeah, some few yeah. really good questions i saw this one while you're looking rick i'll grab this one from joe which i thought was a good question and um he says hey we're hit with ransomware let's say we're hit with ransomware should we immediately consider our on-prem backups and replicas as suspect or go straight to the cloud air gap backups um yeah, what advice show. and yeah, that's a great I question yeah, go ahead. You want to well, I just did be careful. The short answer, yeah. call expertise, <laughs> right? I would actually yeah. start with a call to Veeam support because before they drive any recoveries, they're going to inspect the integrity of those backups and um, and the backup infrastructure to make sure that it's safe to drive those recoveries. So um, I would I would I would consult with an expert first. You know, um, it, it's worth the time. I'll highlight that Veeam recoveries for ransomware scenarios are treated at high priority. So you're not going to have to wait for a call back tomorrow type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, and I would say more and more, we are seeing some of that ransomware stuff attack backups where I think maybe a couple of years ago, it wasn't quite as common and it was more like, okay, we'll just roll them, roll them back. Um, 
and now you know we got to do the inspection and beam's got to do the inspection and making sure because um you know the bad guy the technology's getting better but the get bad guys are getting smarter too so I don't know if you see any others, and Rick, I'm going to well, uh, read another. We had one answer from Carmen. I'm still stuck on that three, two, one rule. I can't convince <laughs> management. Uh, you know, Carmen, uh, you know. Great I'll question. Give you, give you my email. I mean, it's like you can, uh, I'm rick.vanover at beam.com. I'll give you some tips here, you know, but everything's at risk is the best way to put it. Okay, so yeah. um, I'd be more than happy to um, give you some extra ammunition there. And, and then the other side is you can do it easier than you think. That's the other thing. It doesn't mean you have to buy a new purpose-built dedupe appliance. You know, that's kind of like smoking. It's not a good idea anymore. Back to the data points that, that Dirk just shared, right? It's way easier to solve some of these problems in the as-a-service model. So... Um, yeah, reach out to me. Yeah, that's a that's a great question, though. I mean, that's a, and that's a question that we're hearing a lot of businesses ask, like, hey, yeah, we want to do it. Technically, we know we need it. Nobody in operations cares. We have X budget for it, and that's what we're locked into. Um, so I like stories to try to convince people. So if you want some stories, uh, we won't give you customer names, but we can give you a lot of really good stories about people who didn't budget for that and how that ended. Um, let me grab this one from Joe too, while we got a minute yet. Um, this is about uh, uh, VDI environment, special considerations or configuration tips to use Beam to back up VDI environments. And we do, so Virtual Systems is a um, cloud verified uh, VMware partner, which is their top level of um, cloud partner. So we're actually in the top one tenth of 1% of VMware partners, which I, we are pretty proud of, um, which you can hear and my bragging about it. but. Um, it means we do a lot of VDI. And so I would say, yes, there are definitely considerations you want to think about. In a VDI environment, you can store stuff out on the VMs themselves. You can store them in shared servers. You can store them in the cloud. And so that's where you got to be thinking, um, you know, where are you storing it? So you can do agent backups on virtual machines that are VDI. So, you, you know, we've done that. You can do stuff like, hey, let's just have an organizational policy that says, Nobody can store anything on the VM. In fact, there's no way to do it. There's no storage available. So we'll force people to store in a shared, you know, file server in a traditional, you know, file server kind of architecture. And then we just back that up. Um, if maybe all your data just sits as cloud data anyway in Office 365. So despite the fact that you've deployed VDI to everybody, you know, you're still just backing up your 365 data. But understanding the limitations of that and your architecture, super important in determining how you're going to get Veeam to work and what products you're going to use. So yeah, that's a good question, Joe. Actually, this is right there is an example of a service provider having that additional level of expertise. Dirk, I've had the VDI question for 11 years and you've answered it way better than I ever would have. So <laughs> thank you. You got a couple more minutes. Any other questions you want to grab, Rick, or should we uh, dismiss class? You know, um, you know, a couple of people are asking for roadmap stuff. And, and, you know, my canned answer is not a current capability, not something we've announced. But the reality is, you know, just, uh, you know, push, persist until something happens, right? Get in the Veeam forums, get on the Veeam community hub, you know, pressure your sales team and you know, pressure the partners you deal with. That gets back to us, right? We have a process that aggregates that. And I'm convinced, you know, one of my big missions here at Veeam is to bridge the gap between the field and product management. Maybe not the gap, but just be a bridge, you know, from the field and product management. And, you know, I've got a system where we make changes and we track them and we bring innovations to the product, you know. So, you know, just uh, get with us and um, we'll make changes. Yeah. Yeah, good. Um, I just typed an answer to another uh, person who said, hey, does anybody do Veeam appliances as a service? And so I will um, say, I, I want to address that because that's a place that Virtual Systems has been innovating for a couple of years. Um, and we are doing that, the Veeam appliance. So it kind of competes with like a ThinkOn or a Datto um, where you're buying the whole thing, soup to nuts. You're buying like the hardware, the software, you want to buy like the services around like design this thing for me, basically the easy button, right? Like I want to push this button and then it gets installed and you build it for me and it backs up to the cloud and I can recover and I want to practice whenever I want all of that stuff. It's one easy button, one solution. So we do that. I think there might be some, a few more who might do that, but 
um, virtual systems really doing some cool innovations around it too. So we're going to apply for that Veeam Innovation Award at some point when we get this thing fully dialed in. But we got a lot of customers doing this solution. So um, we definitely see the need for it. So I hear your question. Definitely see the need for it. Doing it today. Reach out to uh, Chris Gates or Nate Brinks on our team or just shoot an e email to solutions at vsystems.com. We can give you some more info on it. But that's about it, Rick. I want to just say thanks for your time. It's exactly two o'clock. Thank you to everybody who joined. Um, so you'll be getting email follow-ups from us. Um, we're just going to give us a minute to do a cross-reference. Uh, make sure people liked our LinkedIn page um, and, and everybody asked questions. I mean, tons of great questions and great dialogue I saw on here. So in my opinion, hopefully that's the most valuable thing you get out of this event. Um, maybe it's the 50 bucks, but hopefully you get both of those things. So Thank you again for coming um, and your participation and uh, have a great rest of the week.